And I realized that life isn't fucking fair. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. And you better figure out some tools and some ways to stop feeling sorry for yourself because no one is coming to rescue you. No one feels sorry for you. And at the end of the day, no one really cared about me. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. That was the reality of it. I had to really invent. I realized I had to reinvent a whole nother human being within myself because who I am wasn't going to make it. This, this is not, this guy is not going to cut it. So I had, to, I, I had to be a guy who can take any kind of pain, mm -hmm. any kind of suffering, any kind of torture, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I had to have the people who, I had to visualize everybody that called me nigger, you had to be in a room of people like this. I had, I had to make up these things in my mind, the things I had to overcome. And I, and I started callousing my mind. Through, mm -hmm. through a process, and it, it, it based started with working out. Mm -hmm. It started with working out, it started with doing, like if it started raining outside, for instance, my mind would say, fuck that, man, I'm gonna go run. If it was three o'clock in the morning, it started raining outside. My mind said, you gotta go Get run. up and go run. You, you have to, because I was fighting this other person. That's all it was, period, yeah. dot. Everything yeah. I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. Every single thing. So where we find comfort, that's where I started getting scared. When I started saying, oh, it's raining, I'm not going out there. No, you cannot say that. You cannot do that. You, you have got to do this. Other, so whatever my brain thought, I did the opposite. Wherever the comfort was, I went the opposite direction. And over a period of time, boy, it calluses the shit out of your mind. Mm -hmm. You start to really develop a whole nother being. Well, what drove me a lot, and it's kind of funny, um, growing up, being the kid I was, I found strength in different movies. So I come home, in one movie I found a lot of strength, and as funny as it may seem, but I visualized this scene. I do it today during the pull-up record. I did 4,030 pull-ups. The last time I did it, I actually got it. it. took me three times. I played one song for 17 hours, pretty much. <laughs> it's from this movie, Rocky One, Round 14. I related to the person in the movie, but just the one scene when Apollo's beating the shit out of Rocky. He falls in the corner, and everybody, and Rocky, and, and Apollo turns around, arms up, happy as shit, I, just, I got this guy. He turns around not knowing that Rocky's trying to get up off the, off the canvas. Right. Mickey's saying, Mickey's his trainer Same. saying, stay down. Right. Everybody's saying, you, you, you did good. You did good, you went 14 rounds with, with, with the champ. Rocky didn't hear shit. He got up, and what sticks in my mind today, still, and I'm seeing it right now, when he got up, Apollo starts to turn around to see the aftermath of what the fuck he just destroyed. And he did not expect to see what he saw. And what I see out of the whole movie, I see Apollo Creed's face. Yeah, fear crept in. Yes. Yep. And I said to myself as a young kid, I want to be that. I don't need to win. I don't need trophies. I don't need people to fucking like me. I just want what he has. A fictional character, whatever the hell it was, I want that. And I visualized that. Mm -hmm. And I want to become the guy who can get off the canvas and look at somebody who beat the fucking shit out of him. Life. Yeah. I'm talking about life right now. Yeah. And life, even life itself pushed her head down toward Says, David Goggins. Shit. Yeah. This motherfucker is not going to stop. So that mentality became what I wanted. And that's how it started with that visualization of the canvas. And all I gotta do is just keep getting up. My mind, body, spirit, everything, for the first time, and it's never happened again since that time, everything really connected. When mm -hmm. my mind knew he's not going to quit. Non-negotiable, I gave myself no way out. My mind said, we, got, we have to find more. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, 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 why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, that's life, man. That, and and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as shit. That's what, it, one plus one is two. 
But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people don't understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that's in, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives, but we never read that book. So what I would challenge this young man or, or, or young woman to do is you have to look inside of yourself to see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all just fucking words. I get so tired of hearing people just talking. Like right now, someone may think Goggins is just talking. <laughs> you don't know me. So when I speak, I speak from passion. I speak from experience. I, I, I speak from suffering. I have to tell this young man or woman that the only way I believe, and this is just my experience in life, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer, to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it, some people won't. But they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old and they have great lives and they have great kids. Their kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey, it may suck. But it will, it will come out the other side where you're coasting. Whether you hate me, love me, I'm a fucking dick, I'm a this, I'm a that, whatever you wanna think, I made it. And I know all of you motherfuckers are looking just like Apollo Creed did, because I just kept getting the fuck up. And all I wanted people to do in my life, I don't care about the fucking money, I don't care about the fucking fame, I don't care if, any, I don't care if all my followers go away tomorrow. I wanted a lot of people that doubted me to look like Apollo Creed did in that 14th round because I got back up repeatedly. It's fucking real hard to get uncivilized when you're civilized. Once you've gone to that place where you have everything a man can want, trying to go back into the fucking gutter because the gutter is where you fucking get hard. You don't get fucking hard outside the fucking gutter. You get hard in the sewer. So, so take in a person. And that's what I realized to myself. I cannot, my, my life is good right now, but I can't let it be too good ever. Yeah. I had to remind myself that these calluses on my hands come from hard work. And the second your hands get soft, everything else gets soft. Stand by, it's coming. So what I learned is like you can have too much. You, you, mm -hmm. you can't have too much mm -hmm. and your mind goes with it. My why changes a lot. It changes a lot. But um, right now my, my why right now is to not lose what I have, to not lose what I developed, to not mm -hmm. lose what it, it took me a lifetime to get where I'm at today. And my why is I always want to improve myself to improve other people. You know, for a long time there, this journey was lonely. And as I got to the, the top of it, I, I realized now, looking back, how many people are struggling. Just like me, not everybody had, I mean, I didn't have any tools either. I, I, I had the tools, but I figured a lot of tools out along the way. And now mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's always a good job to go back and give a toolbox to people that, that can you know, yeah. help them out.